In this video, I want to summarize the ways in which operating profit differs based on whether a company uses absorption costing or whether it uses variable costing. So the key is to look at the difference between units produced and units sold. So if the units produced are equal to the number of units sold, there's not going to be any change in the company's inventory balance. And so absorption costing operating profit and variable costing operating profit would actually be identical. So there's no change. However, if a company produces more units in the period than it happens to sell, then inventory is going to go up. And in that scenario, the operating profit under absorption costing would be higher than the operating profit would be under variable costing. And the reason is, is when you produce more than you sell, the inventory is going to go up. And what is happening when this inventory goes up is some of the fixed manufacturing overhead from the current period is being deferred to a future period. Okay, so when that happens, that's going to actually so variable costing. You just expense all the fixed manufacturing overhead immediately. You just treat it as a period cost. But with absorption costing, if you produce more than you sell, then you're going to have an inventory build up, and some of this fixed manufacturing overhead is not going to be expensed this period. It's going to be pushed to the next period. So absorption costing profit would be higher than variable costing profit. Now it works the opposite way. If the company produces fewer units than it sells in a period, then you're going to have inventory go down. It's going to decrease. And then you're going to have some of that fixed manufacturing overhead that had been deferred from a prior period. Now it's going to be expense this period. You're going to eat into that. And so the absorption costing operating profit would actually be lower than what the operating profit would be if the company used uh, variable costing. Now, I pulled in the data from the examples I did. Uh, if you want to check out the videos on how to calculate variable costing uh, operating profit and absorption costing operating profit. But I pulled in the data here from that sample problem that I worked in those videos. And I'll just summarize here. For 2019, 2020, and 2021, I've got the operating profit based on whether the company uses absorption costing or variable costing. Now you will see that in 2019, the company produces 10,000 units and it sells 10,000 units. So the operating profit is identical. It's actually a $10,000 operating loss in each period. So we've got a loss here and we've got a loss here. Now in 2020, the company produces 15,000 units but only sells 10,000. So we go to our chart here, units produced are greater than units sold. So inventory is going to increase. And so we see we end up with ending inventory balance of 5,000, right? We built 15,000 units, but we only sold 10,000. So there's 5,000 left over. So operating profit will be higher under absorption costing. And we see that in 2020, operating profit under absorption costing is 40,000. Variable costing is a $10,000 loss. This is a difference of $50,000. And the reason is, is that some of the fixed manufacturing overhead right here, some of that fixed manufacturing overhead is actually being deferred from 2020 to 2021. And the reason is that we made 15,000 units, but we only sold 10,000. So actually one third of this fixed manufacturing overhead or 50,000 is not going to be expensed in 2020. It will be expensed in 2021. And so that's why we've got this difference of $50,000 here. It's 50,000 of this 150,000 of fixed manufacturing overhead that is being deferred until the next period. Now in 2021, the company actually sells more than it produces. And how can it do that? Well, it had beginning inventory. That's how. So it started with 5,000 5, units, but we produced 5,000, and then we sell 10,000. So now in this case, units produced is lower than units sold. Okay, so when units produced is lower than units sold, inventory is going to decrease. In this case, ending inventory is zero. We sell through absolutely everything. And so operating profit would be lower under absorption costing. And we see that, in fact, that's what the, was the case. We have absorption costing, and we actually, again, have a loss in each scenario. But the loss is much larger under absorption costing. We're going to have a $60,000 loss. And variable costing, it's a $10,000 loss. Now, why is the difference of $50,000? Well, we sold through all the inventory. We end up with no inventory. So we're going to have, for year three, $150,000 of fixed manufacturing overhead, plus the $50,000 of fixed manufacturing overhead that was deferred 
from 2020. So we got the 50,000 from 2020, and then we've got the 150,000 from 2021. That's what, so there's actually extra 50,000 if you think about it, and that's why the loss is $50,000 higher uh, under absorption costing. So if you just follow this, this chart here, uh, you'll have a good understanding. And the key takeaway is if you can just remember one thing, that whenever you produce more than you sell, which actually gives a perverse incentive to managers to produce and build up the inventory, because then under that case, if your company's using absorption costing, operating profit would be higher because you're pushing off some of the fixed manufacturing overhead costs to a future period instead of expensing them today, which is what would happen under variable costing.